Well, welcome and thank you for tuning in with us on another week of our Bible study as we're dealing with a topic that is dear to my heart and I believe it is so beneficial for us because a lot of times when people uh, especially skeptics, unbelievers, people who are on the fence, when they think about religion, they think about a set of laws and rules to abide by. I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And again, we looked at um, Romans chapter number seven and how Paul introduces our relationship with God as a marriage. Now, you don't think about marriage again in terms of a set of laws that we must abide by in order to keep our marriage going. But when you get into a marriage, especially if you've been married uh, like I have, uh, I've been married 17 years, been with my wife a total of 25 years, uh, minus one, but we, we, we've been involved for 25 years. Once you've gone uh, 20, 25 years and longer, you if you're thinking about marriage in terms of what can I do to keep this together as far as following rules and laws? Your marriage has long, long been a prison to you. I, I personally, I, th I try to think of my marriage as far as what can I do to put some foreverness in my relationship with my wife? How can I enjoy my wife? How can I wake up and be so glad to be married every day? I don't do that by remembering rules. I do that by trying to grow closer to my wife through an intimate knowledge. So, as we deal with walking in the spirit, we're dropping an anchor on intimacy with God. Last week, we looked at Moses again. We looked at the children of Israel. This week, I want to look at spiritual intimacy in the Psalms. And I want to look at the language, the poetic language of King David. Now, I almost get envious sometimes when I read some of the Psalms because when David speaks about God, he speaks about God that in a way that I've never been able to talk about God. And we can relate to David because David was full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that when Saul disobeyed God through Samuel, and Samuel told Saul that God was going to rip the kingdom uh, out of his hands and his descendants won't have the kingdom then the Holy Spirit left Saul. But when Samuel anointed David, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, was with David from that day forth. So as we read the writings of David, we also read the writings under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And we read from the perspective of a young man who knew God intimately and also had fellowship with God through his spirit. Now, David didn't have, uh, uh, he didn't have salvation like we have today uh, back then, but he had that intimate fellowship with God through his Holy Spirit. Now, David needs Jesus just as much as we need Jesus, but he knows what it's like to be full of the Holy Ghost and to have relationship with God. I want to go to a psalm. This psalm woke me up this morning, Psalm 63, and I just want to look at the first verse. Uh, well, I'll look at the first three verses. A Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah, Psalm 63. A lot of our commentaries will tell you that they assume that this is when David was on the run from his son Absalom because David he referenced himself as the king in verse number 11 of this Psalm. Psalm 63 verse 1. David says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. That's beautiful. I could read the rest of the psalm, but I want to focus on these three things because there are five things that I want to look at here in this psalm uh, as we look at intimacy with God uh, from the aspect of this poetical lang this poetic language of David. The first thing, again, I want us to acknowledge that David was in the wilderness. Now, he's in the wilderness and he's on the run for his life. And rather than to cry out, 
and say, God, I'm sick and tired of this. David goes into this intimate, loving, poetic flow of words about God. The first thing that I look at in this text is David's urgency for connection. His urgency for connection. And as we look at these points, I want us to think about how is this helping us in growing closer to God for ourselves. Well, David says, oh God, thou art my God. He says, early will I seek thee. And you know, early, a lot of times for us, we want to cling to the bed, especially if we don't have to go to work. But David says, early will I seek thee. What do we do when we wake up in the morning? I can't speak for you. I want to ask you to, to just look at yourself. Do you thank God for waking you up first? Do you go to your cell phone and start looking at the notifications that you missed overnight? Do you start texting people? Do you start playing games on your phone? Do you go to a crossword puzzle book? Do you go straight to your television? Is that the first thing that you greet? You got to get the news first thing in the morning. See, a lot of times these things can be distractions for us. But if we can start our day seeking God, that, that already, you're winning already. You, you want to get intimate with God. Make him your first priority every single day. And don't get religious about it. That's one thing that I, 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 I try to, to keep myself from, uh, from doing. And what I mean is every morning when I wake up, I look at my daily scripture uh, in one place. And I look at a daily scripture in another place. And I'll post it to Instagram and Facebook. Now, I post it to Instagram and Facebook because out of all of the drama that you see on Facebook and out of everybody else's business that you have to read on Facebook, I want to be able to offer the word of God to somebody else. The thing is, if I just do it because this is what I do every day, it becomes religious. In other words, it becomes robotic. Or it becomes mechanical. And my heart is not attached to what I'm doing. And so what I do is I try to look at the scripture and meditate on that scripture before I post it. Like I meditated on the scripture this morning and God just fed me. It blessed me and I couldn't wait to start talking about what this scripture is saying because it blessed me. I don't do that every day, but I try to make it a priority to make sure I check myself so that I know that I'm actually seeking God and I'm not just going through a motion of things. <laughs> David said, you are my God. I I've got a personal relationship with you and I want to seek you early. I, the first thing, when other people are in bed, Lord, I can't wait to get up and talk to you. I can't wait to get up and hear from you. I cannot wait to commune with you. Remember, he's in the wilderness talking like this. He's in a place where most of us would be crying and whining and complaining. Sure, David did his fair share of complaining, but in the same Psalms that David complained, he ended up offering a praise offering to the Lord in the very same Psalms. Very seldom, if ever, will you read about David having a whole psalm where he's doing nothing but complaining and he comes to no resolution that God is good. David is always mentioning that God is good. But David is in the wilderness, on the run, and the first thing that he says is, I can't wait to get up, oh God, and fellowship with you. So, so we must have an urgency for connection with God. That's rich. That's, that's, that's blessing me. We have so many distractions, especially because of our cellular phones and our electronic devices and our televisions. There are so many distractions. I know what it feels like to wake up in the morning and the first thing you want to do is turn on the television or look at your cell phone for other reasons other than reading scripture. But let us get in the habit of seeking God First and foremost, you know what? I'm not a morning person. I don't like to wake up early. My wife wakes up at four o'clock in the morning every morning. And I hear about people waking up at four o'clock in the morning. My wife has to go to work early, but I hear people waking up at four o'clock and they're praying for an hour or they're reading scripture for an hour. I wish I could do that. <laughs> I wish I could do that. 
really I wake up and I usually have 30 minutes or so to commune with God before I start having to get ready to go to work. I really want to grow to the place where I can wake up early and I am excited about spending time with God and taking my time at doing it because God is so wonderful. The second thing that I want to look at in this text is the spiritual satisfaction that comes from God. David says, early will I seek thee. He says, my soul thirsteth for thee. David knows that the only thing that can fill the void that is in our hope, in our soul, put there by Adam, is God. David understands that the only thing that can satisfy him spiritually is God. Not Baal worship, not Ashtaroth, not the gods of Egypt, not the gods of, of Babylon, no other idol gods. No one can do it but God. God is the only one who can satisfy my soul. Oftentimes, we go on uh, what we call a soul search because we feel lonely we feel empty and we start uh, talking to people and we start going on websites or reading books and we're trying to find material and listen to advice that makes us feel whole even those of us who profess to be believers we go somewhere outside of the word of God in order to find what we think will satisfy us so we'll pick up a good book talk to a counselor, watch a certain movie, start going out, different things. We start going to different things to try to fill a void that only God can fill. Must understand that only God can satisfy our soul. How do we know that our soul needs to be satisfied? Because every day you have a struggle with the flesh. Every day you come to realize that you're incomplete, you're not holy, you're not perfect because your flesh will remind you all throughout the day, every day, that something is wrong with us as human beings. The only, and our flesh desires, it craves things. Our mind, we think we want certain things. When, when, when you get these cravings, these desires, you, that's how you know that you need to be satisfied. That's how you know that your soul is searching. See, David, he's out there. He's on the run. He may feel like he's by himself for a minute. But David comes to understand that while I'm out here in this wilderness, while I'm in this dry and barren land, I still have God. I still have God. I have fellowship with God. God keeps me company. God is the one who calms me when I'm nervous. He speaks peace, peace to my chaos. He, he's bread when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty. In other words, he satisfies me. He satisfies my soul's appetite. Thirdly, there's the physical satisfaction. David not only says, my soul thirsteth for thee, but my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Now, there's many who, who, who say that he says this just because he's in the wilderness and he's in uh, a dry place. But I looked at that and, and, and he says, my flesh longeth for thee. Doesn't say It doesn't just say I'm hungry and I'm thirsty, but he says, my flesh longeth longing for thee. And God put this in my spirit and I want to share this with you. My daughter is a very picky eater. My grandbaby, my granddaughter, she's the same. And they'll tell you they're not hungry. But then I'll ask, you want some brownies? You want some cake? You want some ice cream? And they'll say, yes. Yes, sir. And I'll come back and say, then you're hungry. Eat this food and if you're still hungry after you eat what nourishes you, then I'll give you whatever that is that you're looking for. See, children will try to play games with you. They'll try to make you believe that uh, they don't want uh, to, to, to eat 
but really they want to eat, but they want what their flesh desires. And I, I thought about that when I looked at this scripture. And, and, and for me, when I look at this, it's like David is speaking from a, 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 a mature spiritual mind. And he's telling himself, I know my flesh craves this. I know my flesh craves that. But I know with my spiritual mind what my flesh really longs for. I actually know what my flesh needs. No, I don't need to be watching TV all day long. No, I don't need to be reading romance novels all day long. No, I don't need to be playing video games or games on my phone all day long or spending all day on social media. Even though my flesh may crave that, what my spiritual mind says that my flesh is in the position that it's in because my flesh is cursed. And I know what my flesh needs. My flesh needs to be in the place where I can hear from God. I need to be able to commune with God because ultimately what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put my flesh to death. I'm trying to mortify the deeds of the flesh. I'm trying to mortify my members. I'm trying to bring my body into subjection. That's what Paul talked about. Paul said that bodily exercise, yeah, that's good. But we need to learn how to exercise uh, 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 godliness. And he goes on to say that I bring my body under subjection. And I believe this is what David is saying. David is practicing self-control. He's practicing self-discipline. David is saying, I know that my flesh is longing for these things. My flesh longs for that nice food I had on my table, for those nice drinks I had on my table. My flesh longs all of the luxury that I had in my palace. But I know what I truly need. And what I need is to be intimate with God. I need that fellowship with God. I need to hear from God. I need to talk to God. I just need to spend time with the lover and the captain of my soul. We have to learn how to bring our body under subjection. Because if you want to be intimate with God, you got to get rid of all of the distractions and you got to shut the voice of your flesh up. You've got to quiet that old man so that the new man can seek what we truly need. That new man can go after God. You got to get rid of the, the, the distraction. You got to you got to stop compromising. We've got to stop saying I can have this and have that and have this and have that. You can't have the best of both worlds. Really, you got the best of every world if you have God. We'll find that out in our scripture as we go on. The fourth thing that I want to look at is David is able to seek God early. He's able to recognize that his soul and his flesh longs for God. Why? Because number four, David was prepared by worship. His heart was prepared by worship. Look at verse number two. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. David didn't get in a tight and then start thinking, I need to start going to church. No, David was already on a daily basis working on growing closer to God. David was already living a lifestyle of worship. And what does a lifestyle of worship look like? Worship actually means to lay before our master prostrate. And it gives us the image of a dog licking his master's hand. Now, to, to make that more human, that is us adoring God taking the time out to get to know him on an intimate basis, knowing more and more about him, spending more and more time with him. And the more we come to know about our God, the more we come to admire. And just like a dog licks his master hand and that dog depends on his master for everything that he needs for survival. And that dog also receives that comfort loving home and he's able to even enjoy himself uh, in that yard uh, because the master, a good master takes care of that dog, that dog adores his owner. The more we get to know God, the more we'll adore him. And we'll be able to say, just like the writer says, that he's sweeter than the honeycomb. My goodness. <laughs> Prepared by worship. We don't wait till Sunday to worship God. 
How can we worship God Monday through Saturday? Because we're not in church Monday through Saturday. Uh, what does worship look like? Well, on Sunday, what we're used to seeing is actually called corporate worship. It's what you see when worshipers come together and people who have different experiences with the same God bring that level of adoration together. And when we come together, my goodness, what a time, what a time. We sing praises. We say amen. We clap our hands. We nod our heads. We, we receive re instruction from God. You, you know, what we see on Sunday is just all of us coming together to bring what we've been practicing throughout the week. So throughout the week, how do we worship God? We worship God taking time out to pray, to seek his face, to hear from him through his word. Talk to him as you go and come. I talk to God all day long. Um, and I know for some, that might sound super spiritual, but I talk to God like, I like uh, well, he is my best friend, but I talk to him as a best friend. I, I, I talk to God and I ask him to help me make decisions, whatever the case may be. I'm not constantly talking. Sometimes I'm just looking, and that's another part of worship, to adore his creation. If you're not in a rush all the time and you're able to slow down and just look at what God created and you're able to, to actually observe relationships and conversations, you'll be able to pick up on different things that God has blessed other people with and it will bless you. And, and it just makes me just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Worship every day. Is us spending time growing closer, closer to God through prayer, meditation, and reading in on his word. David did this on a regular basis. Of course, he couldn't go behind the, the veil into the Holy of Holies. He had to obey the law that God had set forth. Um, but David still did not let that stop him from talking to God from seeking God and it didn't stop him from reading God's word. David knew the word. The last thing that I want to look at here in our text as we get ready to close is intimate knowledge of God brings ultimate satisfaction. Intimate knowledge of God brings ultimate satisfaction. Verse number three. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. I say that again. Listen to that. Have you ever been able to speak like that? David said, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. How do you get to that place? David had been forgiven crimes that we would have put a man in an electric chair for doing taking a man's wife and having him killed after you got her knocked up and tried to fool her husband into thinking it was his baby David he come to know he came to know God's loving kindness and God's patience his long suffering with David God's long suffering and loving kindness toward David even when David failed as a parent to look out for his daughter to listen to his son, to discipline his other son. David had a lot of shortcomings, but David came to know the loving kindness of God. He came to know God intimately. And he said that your loving kindness is better than life itself. You understand the weight of what David is saying? David had the best of life. David had more in his life than any of us could even think of. Even the wealthiest man in the world today could not compare to what David had as a king. Not even, not even the wealthiest man or woman today. They, they don't even know. David had the best of the world. But David said, forget all of that stuff. I got you, Lord. My gold, my wives, my palace, all of that stuff, it can be taken. 
It can crumble. It means nothing. But to know God intimately, for David to say that his loving kindness is better than life, that is ultimate satisfaction. That's where I want to be. That's where I pray God leads us into, where our intimate knowledge of God is so in depth that we understand that God's loving kindness alone toward us is better than life itself. God bless you and I thank you for joining with us on this Bible study this week. I want to go deeper. And I want to look at the poetic language of David more as we go through the Psalms just to look at what David has to say about God. And I want to know how David got to that point. And I want to know and I want us to know how we too can get to that point where we can see God through the eyes that David saw God and have that type of love. God bless you. Lord's willing, we hope to see you again.